Good evening, lovely listeners, and welcome back to Raven Reads. I'm Raven, and in this brand new video, we're delving into a topic I've never actually covered before. I don't know if I've even personally seen it covered, although I'm sure it has been. But I was recently watching a Mr. Ballin video about this horrific death that happened in a factory, and I thought, factories, they've got to have ghosts. So I went searching and boy did I find some creepy stories. The very last story isn't strictly about the factory itself, but rather the grounds the factory was on. But it was such a good story, I had to include it. Before we get started, if you have a true paranormal story you'd like to share, head on over to ravenreadshorror.com slash pages slash story and submit yours there. Alternatively, you can email me at ravenreadshorror at gmail.com or submit it to the subreddit at r slash ravenreadshorror. However you submit it, I am looking forward to reading your tales. Also, don't forget about my other channel, Raven's Reading Room, which is nonstop compilations. And for those of you who prefer new stuff, Raven's Haunted Universe is all about location-specific hauntings and scary stories. And it has pretty regular content now, too. Ravensong Gaming has also been turned into an archived story channel, but with cozy games. So the slogan over there is Cozy Games, Creepy Tales. All of the links to all of the channels and everything else you could possibly need are in the video description. But without further ado, you know what time it is. It's time to get comfortable, grab a beverage of choice, and get ready to take another journey into the night. My family owns a factory in the north of England. The building is 1890s as far as I can tell, and was built as a large shed for boilers that provided steam to power the steam engines in the big mill next door. The mill has since been demolished. It has a large water tank underneath it and a system to collect rainwater. The roof is made with cast iron trestles that incorporate internal gutters. It's fascinating. My brother is convinced that the place is haunted. Stuff apparently moves around on its own, and voices have been heard in the factory from the office when the factory was empty. We had an old bloke working for us a few years back who swears he saw the ghost of a man on several occasions. He did used to secretly drink several cans of John Smith's bitter whilst on shift though, so who knows. But he's not the only one. So far, I haven't experienced anything. But if I do, I'll be sure to let you know. A little background. I am from Glenmore, Banyawangi, Indonesia. I work at a busy chemicals and perfumes factory for laundry. The place is on a narrow street between large farm fields and oil refineries. Since my home is a long way, I sleep in the factory bunks. This is where I encountered a lot of paranormal things. First, I remember it was a sunny and very hot afternoon. There was nobody in the factory because it was a holiday. I was the only one there because I had to check machinery routinely to make sure everything was in order. Suddenly, I heard a very loud bang, like somebody had punched the tables in front of me. And when I looked, there was a white smoke emerging from it, almost like a vape smoke, but much thicker and denser. It disappeared after that. It wasn't from chemicals or any of the other things going on in the factory. It was very strange. It almost looked like the smoke was aware of my presence. 
Second, one time I was trying to sleep and I couldn't close my eyes, even though I felt very sleepy. I just couldn't close them. It was like I was waiting for something to show up and eventually something started to. I can only sleep like 2 to 3 p.m. And all the while, almost every time, there's this shadow-like figure. It flies through the machines or it will crawl beside the bed. I feel afraid, but there's nothing I can do about it. My body freezes still every time that I try to stand to watch it. It's a terrifying experience and it happened every single time that I would try to sleep there. Third, this happened like a month ago. It was raining on a Sunday night. I was still inside the factory waiting until the rain stopped. I walked into the kitchen to make myself some coffee and that's when I heard a whispering voice inside the women's bathroom. I know that it's only me in there and everyone else has gone home but it's very clearly a voice, just humming. It was raspy though. It almost sounded like a woman in pain, humming to soothe herself. The next second, it was whispering some kind of words that I couldn't understand. My body got really cold and I started to shake. I wanted to run, but I couldn't. It was like something was holding my feet tightly. The whisper became louder. My eyes actually started tearing up. I kept thinking, I can't handle this. I just want to cry, but I couldn't even do that. Finally, after 20 or 30 seconds of this, I broke the hold and got out of there. I didn't care if it was raining. It was better than being in there. A lot of other things have happened at that factory, but those three were the scariest. I want to quit, but it has a decent salary and so ultimately I stayed and I still do. I still work there and I still have to spend the night there sometimes too. Things keep happening, but so far nothing as scary as all of those things, but I'm sure it's only a matter of time. This is a description of events that happened to me during my time as a security guard at a local factory. Obviously, I can't give any locations or names, but I will say that it happened in Germany. I have been working at this place for about two years. It's an old chemical factory that was built in the early 1900s before World War I. I don't know much more about its history other than that though. For the first few months, all went pretty smoothly, but after a while, I started noticing some things that were quite odd. The first thing I noticed on my nightly rounds was that in some buildings, the lights seemed to turn on or off on their own. But I wrote that off as the old electrical installations, which could act quirky sometimes, or employees forgetting to turn the light off. Employees could act quirky too. The thing is, that stuff kept happening, even when there was nobody else but me on the premises. I could check a building at the start of my round, only to return 30 minutes later to find every light in the building turned on, but the doors still locked. There was one particular building that constantly gave me the creeps. A flat, one-story building that was basically one long hallway with office rooms on either side. Every time I walked through that hallway to check if all the offices were locked, I felt like somebody was just behind me, looking over my shoulder. It was also in this building that I heard whispers or sighs from one of the offices, but they were always empty and all of the electronic equipment that could have caused those noises were turned off or in some cases unplugged. Another building that I had weird stuff happen in was the metal workshop. The weirdest thing was that one night, 
I heard a noise from within. And when I entered, all of the machines, the drills, the saws, everything, were on and running. I just ran in, hit the main emergency switch, and got out of there. That night, again, I was the only one there. I tried to talk with some of my colleagues about it, but they said that if I wanted to keep my job, I'd better stop talking about these things, as management didn't take too kindly to people asking questions. So, I haven't asked any more questions, but I definitely have some. This happened like eight minutes ago, and I'm pretty confused, so I decided to come and tell my story. Maybe some of you know what's going on. I saw a car pull up in the parking lot. I'm working security. It parked beside my truck, and it was the only car there. At first, I couldn't tell if it was a cop, because it had no lights on the top, and the cameras don't show enough detail to see the writing. It was also an unusual model, definitely not current, but not super old either. Anyway, I went outside to confront the car, because as far as I knew, they were up to no good, and I didn't like them being beside my truck. I go outside and I start walking toward them, but immediately the car drives to the other side of the parking lot and around the building. There's no exit that way. I see that it says police on the door. So I go back in to see what they're doing before proceeding. And the car is nowhere to be found. The cameras record everything when movement is detected. So I looked back at that time slot. But the car isn't on the feet at all. I appear in the footage walking out of the building. There's no way that the cameras wouldn't detect a car driving in a huge circle around the lot. And I didn't imagine it. I'm very well rested, very alert, as I work third shift every night, and I slept nine hours before coming in. I'm just very confused about what I saw, and why the cameras couldn't. My grandma used to work at an Aramark factory in Chicago, close to downtown. I don't know the exact address, because I think they changed locations. My grandma's job was to iron the fabric that would come through the machines. One time, she went upstairs to the washroom with her friend. Only two could leave the line at a time. So my grandma was in the stall next to her friend doing their business, when through the cracks, they both see the shadow of a man with a fedora and the long coat, but they didn't see any legs. My grandma didn't know if her friend saw it and her friend didn't know if she had seen it. So they started to wash their hands and they heard a man cough. They hurried to leave, took a long flight of stairs to get to their work area, but never said a word to anybody, not even to each other. At lunchtime, though, they did talk about the event. Comparing notes, they both saw and heard the same thing. So they asked this lady who had worked there for a really long time about it. She said that they heard those stories all the time, that it was either Al Capone or one of his associates. It wasn't that specific warehouse, but around that area was where he would do all of his business, where they would arrange meetings. My mom also worked there, and she said that one time the shift was ending, so all the women tried to be the first to leave. They said that once they got to the main doors, everybody saw a huge black dog, like a Rottweiler, but with a huge collar, and he was just barking and barking. The dog wouldn't stop. They called the boss, and unfortunately, 
The boss tried to hit the dog with a stick, but it didn't even hurt him. He wouldn't back away at all. Then, finally, on a whim, the dog just ran away. The lady said that they should check the cameras or something because maybe some gangbangers or people up to no good tried to sick the dog on them. The next day, the boss checks the cameras and you can't even see the dog. They see the women by the door. You see the boss moving the stick and hitting the air, but there's no dog anywhere. Other times, people would see the dog around the parking lot but there would be a gate because it was kind of in a bad neighborhood. So he couldn't have jumped or walked in or out. This was in the 90s when it was pretty bad down there. So nobody understands how the dog could have gotten into such a heavily gated property. To this day though, the weirdest thing is why that dog never showed up on the camera. At the time of this event, I was living in downtown Toronto, and I had just moved in with my new roommates. One guy was my buddy. The place I moved into used to be a shoe factory years ago. So the new place was great. I was chilling with my buddy and our other roommates. Joe and I made a joke about how this place must be haunted because of how old it is. Joe kind of brushed off what I was saying, though, and joked that if he told me stories, I would move out. Joe's been living there for like 20 years, so I don't doubt that he's seen some things. Before I get into the stories, I wanted to clarify that I'm not sure if I believe in ghosts. My attitude has always been that I can't really prove or disprove their existence, or of anything paranormal, really. I've experienced quite a few strange encounters in my lifetime, but nothing to really sway my opinion that ghosts exist 100%. So it was a weekend night. I stayed up really late. It was like three or four in the morning, and I went out to the living area to get some water. As I was filling my water bottle, the whole time I was out there, I felt like something was drawing my attention toward the TV or couch area. The TV was always on. I don't know why. I feel like my roommates were just too lazy to turn it off. So I'm stumbling toward the couches and I could make out the shape of somebody's head from behind it. It was kind of this white transparent color. All I can remember is that as I got closer, there was this static from the TV. It kept getting louder until the TV finally made a big pop noise. I ran back to my room. I just stood there in complete shock. I didn't move for like five minutes, just trying to comprehend what had happened. As I said before, I don't really believe in ghosts, but this scared me really badly. I've never felt an energy or something like that before. It's really hard to explain how I felt during that experience, but it gives me goosebumps just remembering it. The second story took place in the daytime. I was alone in the apartment, cooking some brunch. In the apartment, there was a section of walls that were covered in mirrors. Joe made kind of a makeshift gym in front of them. So I was doing my normal thing, just cooking, but the whole time I couldn't shake the feeling that something was watching me with a sharp glare. Like I said, the TV is always on. So when you're cooking in the kitchen, you can see in the mirrors the TV area reflected. As I'm cooking, this like glitter or flash of light would pierce the corner of my eye, like somebody was trying to get my attention. This happened about three times. I'm starting to get more freaked out because the whole vibe of the apartment just felt really negative, which was odd. As I'm finishing up, the door to my room just shuts. It had been like halfway open. When that happened, I just left the apartment to get some fresh air. I didn't even touch the food I had just got done cooking. 
What really doesn't make sense about this is that the doors we had in that place were really heavy. They had soundproofing on them. So when you went to close them, you really had to pull on them. Those were the two really big things I had happen while I was living there. When I was living there, I had a girlfriend that would stay over all the time. I never mentioned anything about ghosts to her. We never talked about ghosts either when I was living there. It wasn't until I had moved out and we were on a date that I brought it up to her. All I asked her is if she ever saw or felt anything strange while I was living there. What she told me was pretty shocking. She told me about how she would have nightmares every once in a while, where something would climb up to where we would sleep and attack her. The apartment had like eight meter ceilings, so the sleeping area was at the top. This freaked me out because one time I had had a dream that somebody climbed up there and grabbed my feet. I actually woke up from that dream screaming. She also explained that she felt like there were multiple spirits there, some good, some bad. She's way more spiritual than I am. So I had a hard time wrapping my head around what she had said. She said she felt that there was a mix, like I said, good ones and also dark ones. Anyway, that was my experience living in this apartment that used to be a shoe factory. There were other instances of things happening, weird noises, doors closing, the normal. But these two events really stood out. from a small town in the middle of Denmark, and my grandfather used to live about 10 kilometers from us. He was what you would roughly translate as a nature caretaker. He lives at the place and gets paid to take care of it. The place that he lived was in a protected area in the forest, just where Denmark's biggest river meets a huge lake. The place had a lot of old buildings, an old paper factory, and a water mill. It used to be run by the monks of the Benedictine order. They built the mill to utilize the water stream to power the machines at the paper factory. The place is basically called the monastery mill. Most buildings are from the late 1500s to 1700s, but some of them are from 1100. All the way up until the 1800s, the place was run by the monks. On the other side of the river lived the nuns of the Benedictine order, who were said to have a bad relationship with the monks. No one really knows what started this feud. Firstly, it was small. Food would go missing from the monk's stock. Then the water mill would stop, and they would realize an insane amount of wood was blocking the water. Lastly, they would wake up to find cattle and chickens had been killed. And one night, the paper factory, which was built entirely of wood, was set on fire. Ever since that day, nobody had seen the monks. Everyone thought that they had left the mill to go somewhere else, as the order had many monasteries across the country. Well, four years ago, when I had just turned 18, my granddad was going hunting in Sweden. He asked me if I could take care of his place and his dogs for a couple of days. And since I didn't have a car yet, I would just sleep there and take the bus to school in the morning. The place is beautiful and I was so excited to spend some time there. When I went to sleep the first night, I was woken up at exactly 12 o'clock by what sounded like a small church bell. It rang for a couple of minutes and then it stopped. A small bell the monks used to use to call mass was just outside my granddad's house, so I assumed that's what I had heard. But when I woke up the next morning and checked out the bell, it was tied tightly, so no wind or person could have made that bell ring. The next night it happened again. It woke me up at exactly midnight and rang for a couple of minutes. 
I slowly made my way to the front door, which was made of glass, to look at the bell. And there were my granddad's two dogs, looking out while growling. I swear when I looked out, I saw a bald man wearing a long white dress robe type thing disappearing into the woods, almost like he was floating. I called my dad sobbing and asked him to come and pick me up, and he did. We both went back the next day, checked on the bell, and it was still tied up. My dad then confided in me that even though he doesn't believe in that stuff, as he put it, he had had many weird experiences as a kid there, and he still couldn't find any explanation for most of them. Fast forward to last year. My granddad was still living there, and the council decided to split the river and make it wider. Had something to do with the forest environment. I didn't really exactly get why. It took weeks for them to plan it out. And then, the day came when all the machinery to start the expansion got kicked on. They only got to work for a couple of hours though, until they had to stop. Because as they were digging, they had found bones. Just a couple, no big deal. But what they soon realized was that by the river, on the monk's side, there was a mass grave. After specialists were called and weeks of digging commenced, they approximated that the grave had about 40 bodies in it, all from the 1800s. At that point, everyone realized that the monks had never left. What happened to them at that paper factory though? No one knows. That's all for tonight's stories. Thank you so much for being here. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to hear more, be sure to subscribe and toll the bell so you'll be summoned each and every time we meet. For links to my other channels, shops, Patreon, and everything else you might need, check the video description below. Until we journey together once more, stay spooky, and I'll see you in the next one.